All right, everybody. So sometimes I make mistakes. Everybody does. And I just wanted to show you what I do um, in those cases. If you look at this painting, right now it's got two competing centers of interest. It's got, this is the main center over here, and that's the one that I want to maintain. I like the interaction of these two horses, and that was my original intent uh, for this entire painting, was to amp up kind of this interaction over here. I added this guy because I thought the composition was going to need it. It turns out I don't like it because I don't like him here. I like the horse, but I just don't like him here because it's really detracting from the main center of interest, which is over here. It's, it's basically adding a second focal point, which um, ends up being super confusing for the viewer. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in over the top of him here with this background color that you see back here. But I'll, I'll, I'll start it off as if I, I'm going back to square one so that I have the underpainting as well. But, but I'm going to take him out, which means that the background color is going to need to go over here. And I'm going to need to fill in here his muzzle area and then re and then fix um, where the shadow is but that what that's going to do is it's going to bring the focal point back over here now i don't want this to be completely blank so once all of this fill is dry once i come in over the top of this guy and that dries i'm going to come back in and put a couple, probably a couple of cowbirds or something in here to bring just a tiny little bit of interest back into this side of the painting, but not so much that it ends up being a second center of interest like we have now. So maybe some cowbirds uh, here and then one flying or something to kind of bring the, the eye back to the main focal point over here. Again, I don't want to compete. I just want to add to it, so stay tuned. Now I'm about ready to come in with the base background color. You can see this little pink here and here. That's what I'm going to put in the background. Uh, this is why I like oils so much. So if you make a huge mistake, like I did with this composition, um, sometimes it's not fixable, but most times it's fixable. And like in this case, Thank goodness it's fixable because I don't want to start over again. Uh, so I'm going to come in and just kind of start adding in some of these base pinks. And you'll start to see what I'm talking about. It's going to change the way that this looks uh, pretty quickly. Now I'm using just regular oil paint and just a, the typical pink mixture. Um, that I use, I think it's a, it's a, it's just a mess of different reds and pinks, so I can't really explain what's in it. Now, the other thing that I put in it, because I want, eventually I want this whole background to be a little bit more matte and not shiny, um, I'm putting in just a tiny little bit of wax medium that I personally make. It's based off of beeswax and linseed oil. And um, it's, called, it's called cold wax medium. And I use just a little bit of it to take the shine off of um, a lot of these paintings in the background areas. And I've gotten, I've kind of gotten used to doing that. Um, I just like the way it looks in some areas. I don't use it all the time. It can get a little bit too matte and not exactly what I want for the whole painting sometimes, but if I want a, <clears throat> a more modern look and if I want something to just be a little bit less reflective, then I'll throw in some of that um, cold wax medium that I make. You can you can buy cold wax. A lot of people paint with it pretty exclusively. Um, I make it because it's fairly inexpensive to make. It's super expensive to buy, so I end up making it myself. So here's the first layer 
Um, and I just do this, I like to have this, these, kind of these under layers of pink that's, it's not going to be everywhere. It's not going to show up in all places, um, but it is going to kind of add a little bit of extra interest along the edges here. So I've started to mix up the brown, this kind of a grayish brown here in the background. And I added, again, I added a little bit of that wax medium to it. What I'm using as, a, as an application tool is this, um, I don't even know what it's called, but it's a wax you know, paint applicator. You can buy it at a lot of different craft stores uh, and art supply stores. But it's great for this wax because the wax, um, once you get the wax in the oil paint, it tends to get a little bit thicker and stickier. So it's easier to get on and I like the application of it. You can use a brush too, um, but it's, I think I like the, you know, for, for this application, since I've kind of already started with the, you know, one of these applicators, that's what I'm gonna use. Now I'm just putting in the base color, which is kind of a darker, um, a darker gray. What that's that actually is a mixture of white, burnt, or excuse me, white and raw umber, and a little bit of burnt sienna, and a and a tiny, very little tiny bit of uh, yellow ochre. And that's just it doesn't have to be exact, but that's the base color that I'm using here. Now the beauty of using one of these applicators instead of a brush for me is that it's gonna fill in some of these brush strokes that I had um, on the mane of that horse. So that's really what I'm after here with this is I'm, I'm kind of building up the same texture that I have here, but over the top of here, I'm trying to get rid of some of that, you know, texture of the mane. And that's, and that, again, something that this little, um, you know, rubber spatula thing can actually help with. So let me get that in. I'm gonna just add more and you'll see it's gonna kind of start filling in. I'm not too worried about um, what the final is gonna be here. Really what I wanna do is get in some of this paint and start to see if I'm heading in the right direction here. Okay, so that's about that's about it with this layer. I'm going to come in with a few a little bit of this light a little bit lighter layer um, but what I'm going to do first is let this brown here set up just a little bit it won't take long for it just to get a little bit sticky in the meantime I'm going to work on this area here and get rid of his muzzle that's really next and then when when I'm done here I'll come back in over the top with this, with some of the little bit lighter, probably more like this in between. I'm not gonna go quite this light right now, um, but I'm gonna come in over the top with this medium layer once this gets a little bit tacky. But in the meantime, let's get rid of the muzzle and start with this orange. Now this orange here may not be an exact match and it's not, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be, although I want it, in this case, I do want it to match pretty well. Um, and I can come back in later and once this dries up and, and get it to match a little bit better. But, but what I want is just that base layer in here and I wanna see what's gonna happen as I start taking out, you know, this muzzle here. And already I'm liking the way that this looks. Um, and I keep going, I've got the a computer screen up over there with the actual horse. So I don't, I don't want to lose the anatomy here. I'm going to fix the anatomy once I, once I get rid of this muzzle. It's kind of driving me crazy now to see it. So um, the anatomy I'll fix up for real at the very, you know, a little bit toward the end. 
Um, but what I'm adding now is I'm adding a little bit more red in here. I like the, the red a little bit better. Just as I come in and, and take care of this muzzle. Now the, I need to get a little bit more strong here with this orange and come up. It's actually, I had to add a shadow in here when I had the muzzle. And so I'm taking that whole thing out right now. So none of that shadow is going to survive. It doesn't need to. It, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be there if the horse isn't there too. So you can st start to see what this is, kind of how this is looking um, without that other, you know, horse intruding in on our great little composition. So already, it to me, it looks way better. Um, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a little bit of orange in here just so I can interact. Now I do do kind of a mix. I mix, I mix on the painting, but I also mix on the palette. So my first way to mix paint is, is on my palette, but I do like to have wet over wet if at all possible. So wet oil paint over wet oil paint when I come back in. What that allows me to do is it allows me to pick up some of that if, you know, pick up some of that underlying color and mix it into the new paint that I'm adding in. Not, not mixing it dead, um, but mixing it just a little bit so there's little flecks of the paint from underneath coming through on top, on that top layer. It just adds a little bit more interest. So right now I'm going to mix in, I'm going to mix up some of this, um, these pink highlights. I'm not going to worry so much yet about this harsh edge. I'm gonna soften it. Um, I'll soften it before I let this dry today. Um, but for right now, I'm gonna leave it hard and, and I'll come back at the very end um, of today's session and soften it up. The thing is for me, I don't like to leave those hard edges dry like that. I like to be able to work with a soft edge to start with the next time I come into paint. So I'll make sure that those are cleaned up. The, the thing is that with, well, I'll do another video on edges and the importance of edges because it's, it's super important and a lot of artists have never been taught how to deal with edges or especially if you're a beginner or intermediate, a lot of times you have not really gotten the, the, um, the, the lesson on, on edges. There's a lot of reasons for doing for paying attention to edges, it's to make your, you know, a lot of it is to make the, the viewer's eye move through the painting very intentionally. Um, and when you look at something in nature with your own eyes, if you really pay attention when you're out there, if you're like going on a hike or something, not everything is in sharp focus. Only that which you are focusing on is in focus. The rest of it kind of, if you pay attention, it kind of blends away and, bl and blurs away. So that's what I'm trying to recreate with soft edges. So I'll, again, I'll, I'll soften these edges before I let this dry for the, for the evening. Um, but for right now, let me get this pink 